morning in the desert, and another day waking up with my brain shriveled up like a dried apricot. Josh leads us to a famous island of relief around here, the Joshua Tree Country Kitchen. Here you got the usual Americana breakfast fare and the option of a plethora of Cambodian noodle dishes later in the day. Serving the locals and distinguished visitors, Cambodian emigre and owner, the unflappable Marine. Do you like any salsa? I have homemade salsa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's a World War II thing, but my grandpa used to just make a pile of everything, mm -hmm. and then he could just tackle it. And... See, I like to mop egg yolk with, yeah. the, with the toast. Yeah. She's been here a long time. Hey, Marine. Yes? How long have you been around here? 20 years. 20 years. Yes, yeah, since before I started coming here. It's interesting. People came out here to make new lives for themselves. Yeah. But I, I don't recognize it as people running from something else mm -hmm. as much as truly looking for something else. I didn't understand it when I was a kid because you just want to get out of your town. But now I kind of feel lucky to be in a place where there's nothing, you know. But I mean, a lot, a lot of people come out here for that. They're coming out here for some weird connection with, with some force larger than themselves. I mean, perceived there's some mystical going on out here. Yeah, well, there, there's something that's overpowering. It's just grander than you. You spend some time out here, that emptiness, that wind blowing, that, you know, stopping for the sunset, right. without being uh, sappy about it. You go, God, that's beautiful. And so it sort of permeates you. Right. It kind of just somehow seeps in. Somewhere out in this desert, there's a special place where an inexplicable confluence of people, magnetic forces, extraterrestrials, and otherwise strange came together. We drive away from Joshua Tree and further out into the high desert. Our destination, a remote area in the foothills of the Mojave Desert near the town of Landers. There's a, an acutely distinct difference personality-wise between the high desert and the low desert. You know? yeah. It is the end of the road, which really, it turns out, isn't a bad place. It's just where they stop making more road. Right. At the end of the road, we find this. Oh, this could be a problem. Reservations required. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> It's called the Integratron, a handcrafted dome, a marvel of engineering, situated atop a freakish geomagnetic vortex. Built in the 1960s by a retired aerospace engineer, George Van Tassel, whose blueprints he claimed were a sort of telepathic download from outer space friends, Nordic-like extraterrestrials. Well, uh, this, this thing is very similar to a thing that happened in our biblical records where uh, a lord presented Moses with a pattern to build a tabernacle. And this phenomena that's taking place today is as old as our history. Today, the Integratron is owned and looked after by sisters Joanne and Nancy Carl. And they may have an open mind about the astral plane, but they're sure as hell quick to help us get on it with some tequila shots and tell us a little bit more about the enigmatic George Van Tassel. 1953, he has a close encounter with a spaceship, a physical encounter with a spaceship. They invited him to come in, and they download him with a bunch of information. They told him that he could build a machine that would extend our lives 20 to 50 years or more, and that if humans extended their lives, they would gain enough wisdom to save our race. He spends 25 years of his life engineering and building this structure, and he never gets to turn it on. Right? He's shut down by the government a few times. Do we know what kind of technology he was talking about? Tesla science, Tesla technology. Clearly, somebody didn't want it to happen because he did die suddenly and mysteriously. And days later, everything disappeared from the building. Small model research, all of his journals. So the consensus, something special is going on here, for sure. Yeah. We've entertained dozens and dozens of scientists. And upstairs in the center of the room, there is a spike in the Earth's magnetic field 
that is so significant, it's off their charts. And they can't really explain it. The Integratron is the only acoustically perfect all wood space in the USA. And with its parabolic shape, it creates some eerie acoustic anomalies. When you stand directly opposite someone, so Tony, if you, if you came out and stood on the line anywhere, and you hear my voice like it is right now, right? But if I drop into the space that's directly opposite you, Ooh. right? I can hear you in a way that no one else can, and vice versa. Frequencies can be delivered, it is said, deep into cellular levels. And the sisters create the very popular with visitors, sound bath. A sort of sonic healing session using quartz crystal bowls keyed to your body's chakras or energy centers. Visitors have reported experiencing altered states of consciousness in the sound bath. Naturally, I'm thinking, we could weaponize this thing. south of Palm Springs, you hit the dry, mostly monochrome low desert. You skirt the Salton Sea. If Palm Springs is where the affluent go to make their last stand on their own patch of green, it's a more hard scrabble finish for a lot of people around here. But even here, one man has made his mark, creating an enormous amount of color in an otherwise bleak landscape. Leonard Knight has hand-painted a mountain with over 100,000 gallons of paint his way of demonstrating his love of God, a gift, he says, to the world. I just want to tell everybody that God loves us. So if God loves us, why don't we love God and keep it simple? That's, that's the message. If Salvation Mountain adds color and life to the eastern Salton Sea, just 60 miles away, the western shore runs as green as the eye can see. 